review number 32 number 500 They have to get stuff from me. Uh -huh. It's strange that the Tereshkova loves them, even though she's a robot. Flowers. <laughs> Give her flowers. Yes, I I see them here. So, what the hell? Some robots are almost human, and some humans are almost robots. I mean, what are, what am I supposed to do? Find this? What do I do? So. Yes, I am always happy. To That labor thing. Listen, Tereshkova, there are all kinds of things that can represent life. Narrow it down, will ya? There can be no hints for this one. Only something that lives can represent a living thing. Yeah, okay. That's what I thought. So what do I have to do? What is this is this is the labor part, right? Something with labor. I don't understand. What do I have to do? The hammer. Ah, there we go. So I got the hammer there. What's in here? Okay, and then from here. loves them, even though she's a robot. So I, since I can't seem to get that. Flowers, give her flowers. Yes, I know what you're talking about. There are no flowers here. Some changing. robots are almost human, and some humans are almost robots. Strange times we live in. No. Well, used to live in. There's nothing here that I can pick up. There has to be something here. What does that say? Subterranea? Oh, like an underwater city. There's gotta be something here that I can pick up. Yes, no. So I have to get all three things before. Okay. So I got the hammer there. Is there something else here? Like, it's pretty obvious. There's gotta be something here, too. Give her flowers. I think I gotta find a way to lift that. Oh. Strange times we live in. <laughs> Carbon dioxide. The temperature, maybe? Just raining crops instead of all the plants. Planets? 
New sort of blah blah blah. I have to lift that up, okay. Question is how? Do I lift that? What, really? Oh! By putting the weight. Wow. Ah, oh, guys, that was insane. Find the voice of the motherland. Voice? Wasn't it that guy? Somebody that's talking? Oh, the radio. Where's the radio coming from? Aha. Oh my goodness. There you go. Wait. I have a few questions. Naturally, man. Uh, I already. Wait, what's on the floor? What it says? Okay, leave. I already have the stuff to give you. Oh, okay. So, uh, yes, I am always happy to help, Major. Just watch your fingers. I'd rather not have to look for that multi key again. The hammer, tool of working men. The sickle, peasant's friend. The many pointed star they praise and with their lives defend. <sighs> Here you go. This is as alive as it gets around here. Hear the spring's cheerful hymn. Be yourself, strive and earn. Life, I love you, and hope you love me in return. Gosh, oh, shut your face, you dumbass toaster. I'm sorry. Yo, the All this chaos this is causing my emotional algorithms to malfunction. Put something cheerful on, would you? It kind of feels like the end of the world right now. Radio of the future. Astonishing music generated by the state-of-the-art quantum supercomputer based on the preferences and tendencies of the modern performers. The theory of relativity claims these are the songs that the citizens of the future will be listening to. But the citizens of today are already listening to it. Doesn't that mean this is going to be the music of the past once we actually get there? And nobody's going to write it 30 years from now because it already exists. The music of the future could change every second. Well spotted. You have discovered a temporal paradox. How very observant you are. The music of the future shapes the music style in the present. However, the superposition of the observer and the information being perceived are located within a self-consistent loop. In layman's terms, we are always listening to the music of the future and determining what it is going to be like at the same time. Oh, shit. If that's layman's terms, I'd hate to hear the complicated explanation. I'm getting a fucking headache here. Pioneer Nichayev, you passed the Darwin test with flying colors. Tell me, what do you want to be when you grow up? A cosmonaut. What a splendid career choice. I would... Well, I rather enjoy your attention, Major. Now, how can I help you? Uh oh. Do you have a memory leak or something? I need to announce a drill and put the VDNH into drill mode. Unfortunately, this is beyond my ability. Are you yanking my fucking chain? But I can provide you with a solution. You see, a single robot cannot engage the military drill mode. Such procedure requires the presence of two robots instead of one. So where do I find another obnoxious metal dipshit? Before that dreadful nightmare, the information hall was staffed by the two of us. But during the failure, the berserking robots took my partner, Claire, apart. Did they scatter her all over the complex or something? Precisely. How did you know, dear comrade? 
Call it a hunch. Do I have to scour the entire VDNH for her parts? Plug the administrative control drive into me so I can tell you where the pieces of poor Claire currently are. Well, that sure beats looking for him blind. So where's the administrative control drive? I'm running out of time. Please follow me. This whole thing is just monstrous. The robots must have completely lost their minds. Nice music. <laughs> Would you look at this? Helping lumberjacks and first responders is such a noble goal. But you, how do you use the arms our creators have given you? Like a primitive animal, like a beast to crush and dismember. Damn. And this one. It just stands there buck naked, as if nothing were wrong. Have you no shame, robot? Publicly exposing your iridium compactor. What? You do realize he didn't do it himself, right? Oh my, that's a mess. And who, I wonder, will have to clean it up? I should dispatch the cleaners this instant. No, wait. It's the cleaners that did it. I'm so scatterbrained today. Oh, I envy you humans. You can just pick up a razor and shave that horrible monstrous mustache off. <laughs> but this one... That is true. You're not even a machine, you nitwit. You're just an imitation, a caricature, a piece of lab equipment. Pardon the outburst. It's just that one of them used to try to. Oh, well, let's change the subject. Oh. Yeah, he tried to There's do some things. There's a wide range with you, of huh? the lab tech models. The ones in black turned out to be especially vicious. They've been using their harmless built in range finding laser to pick off humans from a distance. How did it ever come to this? Just so you know, the Black Lab Tech specialization is determined by the software package encoded within a specially constructed Kinetico Scholar Neurogel capsule. You can salvage this package from one of the defeated Black Lab Techs, provided its capsule is still in one piece. What? I didn't understand a single thing you just said. You're an assistant, Tereshkova. Talk human. Shocking! You have no sense of decency. I gather you've already met Nora, the monstrous repair vendor who's subjecting humans to unimaginable deadly torture. It pains my algorithms to have to send you into her bloody clutches, but we have no choice. She's the only mechanism capable of utilizing this capsule to upgrade your weapons. Yeah, yeah, move your ass, Tereshkova. We're in a hurry. On my way, comrade! Oh, who's a good boy? Who's the sweetest, silliest, chubbiest little boy? You little goo. You don't attack people even when you're in combat mode. Because you're such a little sweetie, isn't that right? Aren't you precious? Here we are, comrade. The administrative control drive should be at this booth. Please establish the connection. And we're off.